Looking to take that first great vacation? Can't decide between a cruise or an all-inclusive resort? Stay tuned for all you need to know. Our special guest today is Vicki Grison, a travel expert with Cruise and Travel Experts. Vicki hails from Spring Lake, Michigan, and has been wowing her clients for the last 40 plus years. An avid world traveler, Vicki loves to plan great vacations for families and couples, along with group travel for her corporate clients. Hi, Vicki. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Hey, Ken. Thanks for having me today. Great to have you with us, Vicki. So one of the conundrums I hear a lot from our viewers and listeners is the old story of, should I go cruise or should I go re resort? Now, you and I both know there are lots of avid cruisers out there that will do nothing but cruise. And there was lots of folks out there that were like me at one point said, you're never, ever going to get me on a cruise ship. I want to go to a land resort. So I kind of thought for the benefit of all of the viewers out there that we, we could take a look at both today to kind of give our viewers and listeners that may be considering a vacation for the first time what they should think about when choosing between a cruise or a resort. How does that sound? Sounds great. So how do we dive into it? Well, and it's, you know, you're true. It's true what you're saying. We have clients that love cruising. I have one client that rather than buying a condo in Florida, she cruises nine months of the year. And then we have clients that go on 90 to 180 day cruises around the world every year. And then we have the people that they said they'll never get on a cruise ship, but it all just takes us qualifying them and explaining right. to them the differences. Okay. So if we start to look at some of that, like, do, for example, cruises versus resorts, do the demographics kind of vary between each one? They're actually about the same. It just okay. depends on the type of all-inclusive resort or the cruise. We tend to see the demographics being a little bit older. And when I say older, I'm in that range, probably <laughs> like 40 to 90 or 100 year olds doing the longer, like the round the world cruises. Right. But otherwise for both, it's about the same. So when it comes down to deciding between one or the other, does cost enter into it as an effective? It what, can a little, it can a little bit. Hmm. What we tend to do is qualify the clients, see what they want to do, what their budget is. And we can, depending on that, we can get cruises that fall in their budget right. or an all-inclusive. So what do you think tends to be the most effective as a role in terms of cost? Again, they are so similar. Years ago, the cruise included more, or I'm sorry, the all-inclusive did because it has the drinks and the meals right. and everything. But a lot of the cruise lines now have packages that include the dining, the Wi-Fi. So it's like an all-inclusive at sea. Right, exactly. So in terms of the Caribbean, what would you say is the main advantage to booking a cruise for as opposed to a land vacation? The cruise is great for our clients that don't want to just sit around. They want to be active. They're fantastic because you're going to different islands depending on where you leave from. For example, right. if you leave out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, you're hitting an island every day. Now you're only there for a little bit for a full day. But you're getting to see more and you use the ship as your hotel. You just unpack once. So it's kind of like when you think of a cruise sometimes, it's kind of like a sampler. You get to sample a whole bunch of different destinations in a short period of time. Exactly. You have got it right. And that is what we tell people. <laughs> now, conversely, what would what do you think the main advantage of just going strictly to an all-inclusive resort would be? The all-inclusive, if we have the client that wants to relax, read a few books, maybe do a couple of excursions, it's fantastic. You're not as on a schedule as much. You make your own schedule. And on the cruise, you can relax also. But if you're going to take those short excursions or you want to see the islands, you're usually off the ship by like 9 a.m., back by five or so, where the all-inclusive, you make your own schedule. If you want to sleep in, you can, that sort of thing. Yeah, I could certainly be found guilty of that on, on some of these cruises. You can be on the go every single day, really, yeah. if you want. Yeah, and you can relax also. We have people that don't, you know, they maybe have been in these ports and they don't get off. But for our people that haven't been to those islands, you want to get off and do things. All right. Now, one question we get a lot, Vicki, and I, I honestly don't know what the answer is, is the entertainment mm -hmm. on a cruise versus a resort. How do you think it compares? Cruise is much better. 
And that's really? one of the qualifying questions we ask people. Um, I just got recently got back from Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic, and we had entertainment every night, but it, the cruise ship entertainment is far superior. You have Broadway type plays, Las Vegas style shows, you have comedians, depending on the ships. I mean, oh my gosh, the ships have so much now. They have the the swim shows, like the aqua shows with Olympic divers, that sort of thing. Right. So entertainment on the cruise ship, definitely far superior. Far, far and away better. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the accommodations. Now, mm -hmm. we compare a stateroom on a cruise ship as compared to a room that you may get in an all-inclusive. How do they stack up? All-inclusive, better on that one. You have a large room. The all-inclusives, too, their rooms are larger than what the hotel rooms that we typically see in the U.S. You'll usually have your big area for your bed and a separate bathroom, and then you have a living area and your balcony. The okay. cruise ships, depending on you know the category that you go, you can get some junior suites, grand suites that are beautiful. But typically, our clients go with an ocean view with a balcony, and it's a small room. But you're not going to spend a lot of time. It, you don't spend a lot of time in your room anyway. Probably, no. and that probably goes for both, right? Right, exactly. And we do tell people that it's still nice on the cruise ships when you get a balcony, just to have that in the morning to sit out. You can have your coffee brought to you early in the morning. <laughs> Use that as your wake up call and sit out on your balcony. But no, neither one of them, you're in that room that much. Absolutely. I agree with that. There's nothing like breakfast breakfast on your balcony yeah exactly now speaking of food mm -hmm. dining and specialty options how do they how would they compare a cruise to all-inclusive i really think the cruise does a better job the food is excellent you have other dining usually on the cruise you have the main area where you eat and you'll have the same waiter all the time and then they also have specialty restaurants that are smaller and the food is very good an all-inclusive, it depends on the all-inclusive and the cost of the resort that you're going to go to. Some resorts do their food better than others. Right. The one we were just at was wonderful. The food was great, but it's not like you go to that all-inclusive and say, oh, we went for the food. The cruise ships, I think, do do a much better job. Do they have, like, the cruise ships have specialty dining where there's specialty restaurants on board. Mm -hmm. Do some of the all-inclusives have that same kind of idea? They like do, specialty yeah. Restaurants? They they do. Thanks for asking that. They yeah. do. They have typically they'll all have like a Japanese with the the teppanyaki grills or they'll have French and Italian. So they do have specialty dining. Those are a little bit smaller venues and very nice. With regard to the dining and, and the food options and specialty restaurants, I would expect that would kind of go to the value of having a great travel advisor in your corner that has been to the resorts and been on board the ships to be able to give you good advice on that, right? Oh my gosh, definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Use a travel agent. You know, I can't go everywhere, but I've been doing this 45 years and we get to travel so that we can experience these things for our clients. There's, we know cruise ships that do better than others. We know all inclusives that do better than others. And if I can't go everywhere, we have other agents that have been around as long as me and we all share each other's experiences in order to tell our clients. What about the time of year and, and the weather? Does that that factor into consideration whether you would put somebody on a cruise ship or into an all-inclusive resort? Well, it does for both of them. And again, another great reason to use a travel agent because people don't often know, like hurricane season can be June through November. Mm -hmm. And we know the destinations where the hurricanes tend to hit, what to months, et cetera. And we can tell people, no, don't go there then. But typically, and especially because I'm in Michigan, our, we like to get away when it's snow. So any <laughs> time like november through like early june is a great time to cruise and it depends on where you're going too. like alaska you're going to go in the summer oh for sure yeah and it really when it, when it when it comes to the caribbean and that sort of thing we're snowbirds as well so one, just like you once november hits and especially january thinking yeah, I need to get out of Dodge here and get someplace warm. Yeah, and for people that want like a good deal for the cruises and the all-inclusives, if they go usually early January th through the second week of February, there's some of the best deals. Now, why is that, Vicki? It's just because that's the time of year, just coming off Christmas and the holidays. The weather is going to be not as warm as it is maybe in late February, March. But when I say not as warm, I'm talking not 80s or 90s. It's still going to be 
in this high 70s and beautiful, but it's just the lower price point for both. That's a really good travel tip. And, and again, it's because you figure you have the high school spring breaks and college are, you know, those are all in February and March. So right. again, mid to end of January, first two weeks of February, we can get some great deals for you. And then Alaska, if you do Alaska, it's the same thing. And again, that's the importance of a travel agent. We know when we can tell you when yeah. the best times to go. Alaska would be spring or in the fall. As a consequence of that, you would also know how far in advance that you probably need to book to get what you want if you are traveling with the kids and you have to go in the peak season, like whether it's over Christmas or during spring break. Exactly. And if you're going those peak times, book at least, we can't usually get air until about 11 months prior, Right. but get that cruise or that all-inclusive booked as soon as you can, because right. you're going to get the better rates the earlier you book. Now, another question we get up, we get quite often is said, you're never going to get me on no cruise ship because it's too crowded. <laughs> so what's the, what, what is actually the scoop on crowding uh, cruise versus resort? It really isn't a problem nowadays. We know as a travel agent, again, we know what cruise lines uh, handle the crowding. You know, we have cruise ships that will have 2000 passengers on it. And I was on one and we har we hardly ever saw the children. Not that I don't love children, <laughs> but they, there was an area on the ship just for the kids. Oh my gosh. And the cruise lines and they do such a great job and the all inclusives with activities for the kids. They all do such a great job with crowd control that it isn't even a factor. Wow. Speaking of that, is there any difference in regard to personal safety? Where is one going to feel more safe cruise versus and 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 also when we, we have to think about our health and health in the in this day and age right and it's you know since covid and everything everybody has taken such great measures with safety and security and health that both do a great job oh, fantastic mm -hmm. so vicky if somebody comes to you and they can't make up their minds how do you how do you qualify somebody that's undecided between cruise and resort? We just sit down with them and we ask them questions. What do you envision your trip to be? Do you want to be relaxed? Do you want to just read a book and lay in the sun? Or do you want to be active? Do you want to do things? Do you want to go see a port every day? There are people that I have some clients that they won't do anything but cruising. And I just got them on an all-inclusive. <laughs> they had a great time, but they said it was just too relaxing for them. So it's up to us as a travel agent just to sit down and t talk to them and ask them, okay, what do you want out of your vacation? And from that, we can decide what to do with them, where to put them. Right on, right on. Well, Vicki, this is really great in, in information. Is there any last words on the topic? I don't think so. The most important thing is use your travel agent because we really do have the expertise we can find the right fit for you, get you the best rate. So use your travel agent. And on that note, if folks wanted to reach out to you about a possible all-inclusive or cruise vacation, Vicki, how would they do that? Oh, I'd love that. They could reach me at my direct line, which is 616-942-2862. Or I believe we have it rolling around the bottom there. They can <laughs> email me, which is usually very good. V Grayson at cruiseandtravelexperts.com. And I just wanted to add too, we get some really great discounts and rates. So please, everybody, give us a call. Sounds great. Sounds great. I always like to ask my guests because I know part of your job is you have to know the products that you're selling. What plans do you have for 2023 and 2024? Where are you where are you personally off to next? Well, I just got back from Punta Cana, and then this summer I'm hoping to do a river cruise in Europe. Oh, great. great. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have you back to regale us with your adventures on that river cruise. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Ken. All right, Vicki. And with that, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your future adventures and cruises. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Vicki Grison of Cruise and Travel Experts. If you'd like to reach Vicki, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us with a suggestion for a future topic or simply a question, you can send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.